What's going on? What's going on? You see what time it is. Drams on deck. Today, today I got to get something going on. Today I want to get a review for y'all, man. Oh, uh, we got, this is a store pick from Beanie's I got not too long ago. And I was in Chicago for work. 55% store pick. I usually don't do review store picks just because it's only local to that Pacific area. Um, but maybe one day I might get a collage of store picks and just throw them out there. We'll see. Clyde Mays, six years. Copped this not too long ago. This is a interesting one. This is like my second, third bottle of Clyde Mays. Not the exact same one, but this this one right here. Yeah, we'll get into you soon. You got the Heaven Hill. This just dropped not too long ago. So I got that cracking. Right, this I've reviewed this before, so I'm not gonna do that one again. If you've never been, if you're not familiar with Cedar Ridge, this is an Iowa distillery. They do wines, they do spirits. This one right here is a good one. I actually saw this when I was in Chicago at Beanie's. They had it there as well. This is a solid one. So if you see it, if you like sweet and peats, I'm telling you, whoever thought that an Iowa distillery can do a peated sherry dram and then come out like a whew. Anyway, stay tuned. We got the Welly Well back here. We got Chew. Oh, I just got this not too long ago. This Blanton's Gold. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I actually found this just on a whim. I was out shopping, looking. I wasn't even looking for this. Someone told me they were selling it. Now, I ain't going to cap. I had to, you know, overpay for it. But, I mean, then again, you know, I mean, who's selling Blanton's Gold for retail nowadays, huh? You know, here's the box that goes in. But with all that said, we're going to do this one right here today. The Ardbeg Bizarbecue. Yes, yes, y'all. By that, just want to say 51% ABV. Isla Scotch uh, Whiskey, Sweet and Peat. Um, this one right here, uh, we're going to dive all into it. If you don't know, I'm a I'm a Peter guy. I love Peter whiskey. So we're going to dive all into this Ardbeg Bizarbecue. Um, this came out recently, like when I say recently, like in the last few months. Um, so this is supposed to be have a barbecue char flavor. So we're going to dive all into those notes. Just showing you the back of it real quick. Get a quick 360, but double char barrels, Pedro Menaz, which is sweet sherry. We'll dive all into that. But anyway, our big Biz Barbecue on deck for review. Let's go. You see what time it is, baby. Rams on deck. <sighs> As today, we got a nice smoky hitter in the building. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. We got the Arbeck Biz Barbecue. On deck for review. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. Now, our bag, if you don't know, it's a scotch. Single malt from Scotland. Um, they're known for their peat, right? Peat is a smoke. So they're one of the smokiest ones on the block. I mean, you know, they had they're no them, the Freud, I would say Brulatis, just uh just name a couple. Uh the Bowmore, you know, those are some of the ones that are known for peat. This one right here, uh, as I said earlier, 51% ABV. This one is double charred. Uh, it's, I guess, some kind of barbecue barrels or something that they, they I don't know what the hell that means. But anyway, it's double charred barrel, and they're supposed to take on and part flavors that you would get from a barbecue. Smoked meats, uh, you know, pork, um, anything of a meaty consistency. So we'll dive all to that in just a second. Um, me personally, I like I like our bake. I'm a fan of it. Um, I have uh, reviewed their core reckoning. I did a uh, couple of other ones, like this one. In particular, I have the uh, Oogadol. This one is very good as well. Um, this one's probably one of my favorite of their core range, the Oogadol. This one's 54%. I reviewed this one as well, along with the Anoa. Uh, this is probably, when it comes to like smoke and meat, I would call meaty peats. This is probably one of the most meaty peats ones that I can, I've had, you know. And it, well, it is of uh, art bit. So anyway, um, it's not side by side, but it's showing you the bottle, Oogadol. You can find it somewhere. Um, had that for a little while. That's probably the most medius um, R bag that I've probably had. So we'll see how this uh, barbecue, this barbecue does. Um, but like I said, not age stated. I, I got this one. Believe it or not, this is pretty reasonably priced because they, you know they've been dropping a lot of committee releases and some of them been hit and miss. A lot of misses from what people say. Uh, this one's only eighty bucks, so I was happy to pay under a hundred dollars for this. Um, like I said, not age stated, but you know. I'm the type of person I like sweet and peat. So like I said, if you don't know, PX is a sherry. It's a wine, but it's very sweet. PX is a, probably the sweetest uh, sherry that there is. It's more of like, like a dessert after dinner type of wine. So when something's aged in PX, it should impart uh, a lot of sweet character. So uh, you mix that with a good smoky peat and you mix in the char barrels. So you should have a lot going on that should be hopefully tasty and delicious. So we'll dive all into that. Um, but yeah, I had this bottle for probably about two months and you probably can't see because of the dark green hue but i'm probably about right here in the bottom way past the sh uh shoulder so the neck pour i've already got past it 
And for me, I, I've known for certain vials that just need to be open a little bit before you review. Uh, certain vials you can review right from open and some ones you don't. So be it as it may, I like to give most of all my vials um, time to open up. Unless it's one that I've, I've had, you know, uh, a lot of experience with. But this is the first time I've ever had it. Um, some of the notes on the back uh, just pretty much says that uh, it's a barbecue. It's pretty much PX Sherry cast. Um, like I said, it, it says it's supposed to have uh, aromas of smoked uh, artichokes, steak, hickory, ham, and cinnamon dust espresso. But uh, but more large, like I said, man, um, I was happy. I think this is relatively priced for what you know it's supposed to give. Though it is non age stated, but I mean, be honest with you, you know, our bag don't do really age uh, statements that much other than, you know, they do have a 19 year that's like expensive and you have a 10 year. But for the most part, you do have the WeBC, which is like five years. But for the most part, the majority of their other offerings are not age stated anyway. So anyway, take a look at this color. Just a probably about a medium amber color. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Um, I actually, like I said, I pulled up uh, my local liquor store. I wasn't even looking for this. I just happened to see it there. Pulled up a couple of reviews and said, you know, it's like, let me give it a shot. So, like I said, that's what made me get it. Um, and like I said, the price was right. So, if this was like $170 or something like that, it'd probably still be sitting on the shelf. So, the fact that it's, you know, reason to the price is one of the reasons why it's like, you know what, let me let me give it a shot and let's see what we got going on. So, without further ado, let's take and see what this nose has to offer. All right, now, that's supposed to be barbecue. So, I, you know what? I get smoke character, but I don't necessarily think of a barbecue. Like, if you ever had an Oogadol by our bag, to me, that just, just derives of a straight barbecue. This one, I, I mean, I, don't get me wrong. You get the smoke character to it. You get that. And I would say it's not, it's not the dry, peaty ash that you, may, you know, usually may get, though. Um, but it's a nice, nice little char I get. I mean, it wasn't char barrels. I don't pick up a lot of meat on the nose. I'm, I'm like how I said, ham and, you know, cured bait. Like, you know, I'm not really getting meat per se, but I'm getting good smoke. <sighs> honey, I get a little bit of honey. I mean, like I said, cup of beef from that PX cast. Like I said, that PX cast is a sweet dessert wine. So it's going to have a lot of, um, you know, maybe dark fruit, uh, dark fruit, and, and uh, you know, pretty much on the nose and on the palate. Hopefully it should. <sighs> but by and large, you just get, like, like I said, just light sweet oak. You get... Like a cherry on this on the nose right here. <sighs> a nice, a nice, like nice smoke. I wouldn't say dry, dry, like a dry PD ash, like an ashtray. Sometimes if you ever had LaFroy, how it had like real ashy. You don't get the ash on here, you don't get brine from here. But you do get a nice char, like a nice wood smoke char. But I'm not picking it out. I don't really pick up meat influence, at least on the nose. <sighs> All right, without further ado, let's see what this palette has to offer. Cheers. Okay. Mm. First sip of the day. Right now, my palate is getting sensitized to the heat. 51%. Right now, how I said, you don't pick up the dry, a dry campfire ash on the nose. However, I am picking it up on the palate. But as I said, I always like to take two sips to kind of saturate the palate. My first one opens me up. Second one kind of saturates a little bit more. So let me take one more quick sip and dive deeper in the notes for you. Okay, so you do pick up some sweetness on here as well. It was not overly sweet, but I would say it's probably medium high sweetness. So out of one to 10, 10 being the sweetest, I'd probably say this is probably like a five and a half, six on the sweet scale, which is a little bit above average. Not too, not overly sweet, but good enough though. Um, sweetness, I just pick up a little vanilla, pick up like a little small hint of a pineapple on there, like a, like a fresh melon. And then it rolls into that, that campfire ash. You get you get that you get the campfire ash. You get the peat. But you know what? I'm not picking up. I'm not picking up a meat character. I'm not picking up a, like a, a ham, bacon, 
um, any kind of a smoked pork chop. You know what I mean? Like that type of stuff. Like like I said, those type of things you get on the Uber doll. The bar I showed you earlier, you pick up more of those meaty characters. You get the peat. Don't get me wrong. You get peat. But I, at least on my palate, it's not super. I wouldn't say super meaty. The peat, that. Yes. Peat, yes. But not meaty. Um, so, uh, like I said, I, if I'm thinking of a barbecue, I'm going to pick up the Uber doll. You know, as far as I, if I just want like a straight meat character. But nevertheless, this is good. I like it. Like I said, you're going to get a nice amount of sweetness, then you're going to get a nice, heavy amount, well, medium, high, heavy amount of peat. Uh, but like I said, campfire ash, you get the uh, smoke on there, like a little bit of a, of a good char, you know what I'm saying, on there as well. So it's, it's, I like the way it marries together. When I first when I first put it on my palate, the entry level to the mid palate is mostly all that sweetness, probably coming from the PX. So a little bit of that, that like I said, that pineapple, that vanilla, that honey, that fresh melon, um, I'm getting that. And then as it goes from the mid palette down the hat is when I'm picking up a lot of campfire ash, a lot of heavy dusting of peat smoke, black pepper, and it goes right down the hatch. And right now, I've done that thing probably about over a minute ago, and I still get a little bit of that peat dusting on the on the palette tingling there. So that's a good medium-high finish, too. I mean, like I said, usually why I always tell people why I like scotches so much is because I think that the peated whiskeys have pretty much the longest finishes of any spirit that i've ever had i mean when you get a good peat you can just smell it in the room you ain't, i mean i can smell it sometimes four or five feet away and you can just smell the peat but when you put it on your palate almost if you smoke a cigar how even when you kill you know you still have that that cigar uh that flavors in your mouth so i think in, in a good peated whiskey you're gonna get that as well so that's why i love uh peated whiskeys because they have the finish for a good peated the high proof but you're gonna get a nice long finish and that's what i really enjoy so i did put some water in there after my second sip i want to see if the water it has any different flavors in it, but by and large, um, it's not too hot. I mean, don't get me wrong, it's got some oomph to it, so it's not no punk, but at the same time, it's not going to burn your throat or anything like that, but that's if you're, you know, an experienced drinker or if you're someone who's used to peat. If you've never had a peated whiskey before, if, you, if, you, if you're someone who just drinks mi uh, like mixed drinks and you put everything, you saturate every, every whiskey with ice and you don't drink straight and you never had a peat, then yeah, it's probably going to be hot to you. You know what I mean? So I'm, I'm speaking relatively of people who are, I would say, experienced sippers. Uh, neat, you know, neat straight. So, you know, not no mixing, no water, not not heavy doses of water and ice. Just a neat sipper. This should not be a problem at all, especially if you're used to peat. So, um, I wouldn't know how this water if it ha inherits any different flavors. So, let's take a little one last sip and see what we got. It just draws out the peat more, has it? Everything is the same. I think you still get the melon, the, the pineapple, a lot of the, the the honey vanilla. But I think when I when I put those water in there, it just kind of drowns out the peat more. So you don't, at least on my palate, you don't get quite as much as the campfire ash. When it goes down the hatch, it's more of a of a dry ash, not a heavy dose of heavy peat. So um, I like it better without water. I mean, I guess, but I might maybe I add one or two drops more, but who knows? But either way, it's a good dram, regards. But to me, I mean, 51% is not, to me, super high. Um, you know, I kind of like prefer 60% if you really want to know. So um, I think for, for my palate, I'm going to speak it for my palate, I'm good with uh, just sipping the neat. Not bad at all. Um, if we're talking about barbecue and meat character, I don't pick up a heavy, I don't really pick up any meat on here. I pick up uh, peat, campfire, ash, smoke, vanilla, melon, pineapple, a little bit of that, and it swirls around, and it's nice. I enjoy it. Half sweet, half peat, pretty good. I'll enjoy it. Um, if you want meat character, I would say probably in, in the core range, you would do the dolls and hands down the meatiest peat that you can find in the, in the core range of um, a bar bag. Um, but nevertheless, I've had to rate this one to 10, 10 being the best for me. Dram's on deck. Um, I'm going to compare this to other peated whiskey. So if I, you know, sweetened peat. So if I had to rate this one out of a 10, 10 being the best on taste factor, um, I'll give this a, a eight out of a 10. Um, I think that was, was a very, it's a pretty good score. 8 out of a 10. You know, if it's 9 out of a 10, that's something you, uh, it's just like OMG almost. But 8 out of a 10, and that's out the door with. Price, availability, taste, I think is a good, nice, sweet, and peat. So I'm, the 8 out of a 10 is compared to others, you know, sweet and peated whiskey. So I think 8 out of a 10 is pretty good, you know. Um, I enjoy it. I think it's a good cop. I mean, I think it's a, you know, good buy. I think that once I kill this bottle, if it's another one available, I wouldn't mind buying another bottle of that. Uh, I would I would say that between this and Ugadol, Ugadol has it beat by far. Um, but this still is nice, though. So I think the Ugadol, I haven't bought an Ugadol in a while because I already got a bottle, that, as I showed you earlier. So I think it was probably around maybe the same price point. 
maybe slightly less, but um, between this and Dog, Dog definitely has a beat, but this is still good too, though. So I like it more than the NO. Um, they have the Arbeck NO. I prefer this Biz Barbecue over the NO. Um, it's been so long since I had a core of reckoning, but I know the core range, the Ugadol was my favorite. So all in all, I hope you got something out of it. If you saw this in the store recently, whatever your area that you're living in, and you, you was like on the fence about it, if, you, if you're an Arbeck fan or a Peter Whiskey fan, and you've, you know, you haven't, uh, try this one yet. Hopefully this, the specs on this can help give you an idea that's something that you might want to invest in or not. You know, um, I definitely, definitely would try more. I mean, I, there's some Hypernovas by Arbeck. I missed out on it. I haven't tried that. So hopefully this year, maybe I can, if they still come out with another re, uh, release, I can get the Hypernova, but that's like a $200 bottle. So maybe if I get good, if I hear good reviews, I'll get that and review that one. But anyway, this Bizarre BQ to me, I think it's an eight out of a 10. I think it's a good buy. It's a good buy. Um, I wouldn't say some. Oh my God, you have to have it, but it's it's above average, and it's, it's a. And if you like sweet and peace, this is. I think this is a very good one. I think it's for eighty bucks. I think that's not bad. It's not bad. So, I hope those notes can give, uh, can give you influence or whatever you would have invested in that or not. Hopefully, you'd like the view. If you did, hit the like button. Hit the subscribe button. Like, subscribe to free. Um, also, man, I have a cash out Patreon. If you do choose to make a small donation, and I also. I also have some other things I need to get done as well. So, but all in all, I hope you enjoyed yourself. I had a quick thought on that, like about any about this bottle. But anyway, I hope uh, that you all enjoyed the review, and I hope everyone's we're about to head into fall. So I got hopefully this, uh, this is gonna be some good uh, bourbon season for uh, people coming soon. Hopefully, I can get that going and uh, yeah, move forward and just and just make things happen. So all in all, hope everybody enjoyed themselves. Take care. Signing out. Drams on deck. Yes, sir.